We also have what's called a HEMIC, so a helmet-mounted queuing system. It is a monocle that basically will put any of those different features. So if we've got a target that we've designated on the ground, we can look over at that particular target and see, no kidding, red triangle that's over top of it as long as it's bore sighted correctly. Hi everyone, my name is Captain Lindsay Johnson. My call sign is MAD. Uh, today I'm gonna show you everything that I take with me to the jet when I go to fly the A-10. The standard helmet we've got here, we've got a black visor. This is if I'm gonna go fly kind of a normal cross country flight or an instrument sortie, uh, nothing that requires uh, necessarily uh, too much as far as like tactically speaking goes. So I'll usually put that on there. We keep the cover on it so that way it doesn't get scratched up because when you get out to the aircraft, the crew chief will throw it up in front of the HUD and you want to make sure it doesn't get scratched up. Uh, the helmet itself has got the standard masks. We hook into our uh, what's called like a crew 60 that's actually in the aircraft. It's what hooks our oxygen hose to the oxygen that's on the actual aircraft itself. Uh, and that's where the oxygen will come flow through into my mask. Uh, we'll make sure that everything is clear, it's not uh, dirty, that we actually are able to, we don't see anything that's going to be impacting at least our ability to talk here. And then you just give it a uh, once over to make sure, hey, all of my normal audio connections are plugged in. For me, I fly with what we call access, so it's specific earplugs that we use to plug into the helmet itself. It's formed, molded to the inside of my ear. So when you see I wear them like this, it's a lot better for me. You're probably hearing me talk a lot louder now, but it's a lot better for our ears. Uh, we can hear the uh, communications a lot better. So typically if you fly with regular earplugs, this thing is still plugged in. But for me, I plug in when, before I get into the start engines and everything, I plug into there have these on, have my helmet on, and I can hear everything through these earplugs rather than the normal foamy earplugs that you see. So for me, I usually just make sure, hey, this is actually still uh, good and that this is unplugged for me. Uh, but it's a typical helmet for us. It's got what they call a nape strap. So this is what helps keep the helmet fitted to the back of your neck. It goes like right under your actual nape of your head and stays fitted onto your head. So if you have to eject for any reason, the helmet is going to stay uh, properly on your head. And then we also have good uh, ear foamies that cover up your ears to help keep you an additional ear protection for the loud engine noises uh, in the inside the cockpit. Uh, other things for the helmet itself, uh, we have what's called a lip light. If you look, uh, it's right on the inside of where you'd actually, it's going to look weird when I actually do it, but no kidding, you can see this right here, if you push on that, that changes the actual light on or off. So you no kidding, just put your tongue out like this to turn it on and then back off again. This is uh, huge at night for us to be able to have. So if I'm writing on my kneeboard and I need to be able to see the piece of paper, rather than turn on a bunch of lights and affect my night vision, I have this little lip light that I can just turn on quickly, make sure I'm seeing what I'm writing down or see what I wrote down previously and then turn it back off. Uh, so usually what we do if we're not flying on nights, we keep this unplugged to save the battery for it. Generally what we say if we're flying nights, if my lip light's not working, it's an emergency, and <laughs> which is not serious, but we feel like it's an emergency because uh, you know, hate not being able to see things in the cockpit. So generally I'll show you what I do. Once I uh, make sure my helmet's good to go, throw the helmet inside the cockpit or inside the uh, helmet bag. Uh, put that in there. I've got my water bottle that I'll typically put in there. Next thing I'll talk to you about is the harness. So for us, uh, each of us flies with the harness since we're in an ejection seat aircraft. So our ejection seat is the ACES-2. It's a seat that's rated for zero to zero. So we're, moving, we're at zero feet and zero knots. So I could be canopy closed sitting in the aircraft and have an issue and I need to eject uh, and the canopy should open up safely for us. So Standard stuff for the harness, we've got a chest strap right across here, and then we've got two leg straps. So uh, they've got you know three contact points for us, both with the legs and then across the harness. 
Uh, over here, when we were, uh, I didn't talk about this with my helmet, but we also have what's called a HEMIC, so a helmet mounted cueing system. You've probably seen some pictures of it. Let's see if there's any helmets that are here. I'll borrow this guy's helmet. We can talk about it. Uh, it is a monocle, essentially. They're fairly expensive, uh, but they have a whole electrical cable that will go through to the cockpit, and it'll plug in down here. You'll plug in on the actual harness itself, and then you actually will put it through here, so that way, hey, if for any reason we need to eject, this is safely there to keep you. What is the monocle for? So our monocle, it's hooked up to our aircraft. We have um, moving maps. We've got different ways we can designate targets. We can see other aircraft that are airborne. It is a monocle that basically will put any of those different uh, features. So if we've got a target that we've designated on the ground, we can look over at that particular target and see a no kidding red triangle that's over top of it as long as it's bore sighted correctly. So it's, it's really actually fairly accurate. It allows us to just add more, uh, have more information as to what we're seeing in a battle space, uh, which has, helps us out a lot. So a little bit bigger of a visor that we've got that will go over top of it. Uh, and you can turn this on and off uh, with a button that we've got on our actual um, sticks using what they call HOTAS, so hands-on throttle and stick. So right eye over here is where we're gonna be looking. Uh, generally looking out over our canopy um, from the right side, and we can see other aircraft that are airborne. You can see uh, different targets, friendlies, those type of things uh, out on the ground. So when we go to step to fly, generally for us as A-10 pilots, we generally fly with two knee boards. These knee boards are used uh, to put any of our data cards or any uh, pieces of paper underneath products that we have when we're flying. Uh, we'll place them here on our knees so when we're flying we have a quick access to be able to fly and then typically pilots will fly with what we call like a pencil tab holder. They'll easily put their pencil in here, they can keep flying the jet and then quickly just go and write on the knee board like that. Uh, so usually when we brief uh, with students we've got data cards that we talk to. It goes over, hey what's our takeoff time, what time are we going to land, what airspace are we going to, who are we going to be talking to than any other pertinent uh, information. So once we finished briefing, we'll put our piece of paper on our data card. Uh, we'll go up to our step desk where we get any of the applicable information for our flight that day. We get what tail uh, and spot that our aircraft is at. So the tail number for the aircraft, where we're gonna be going uh, as we step, we throw that on there. Uh, and then we'll put that in our flight bag here. So our pubs bag that we all fly with, uh, for us, up on the A-10 itself, right above, or right in front of our HUD, we have a place on our glare shield that we can place this pubs bag. So pretty large, it can fit a lot of different stuff in it. But what we'll do is right in front of us, the HUD, right in front of the HUD, it'll sit up here like this in the aircraft itself. What, what does a pubs bag, is that short for something? Publications bag. So used, it used to be before we had uh, electronic flight bags or iPads, we used to carry all paper publications. So you'd have to stuff everything in all these pockets. What kind of like publications are you carrying with you on a flight? Yeah, so for us, we've got any of our, what they call like tech data. So if we've got any emergency procedures, hey, I've got a hydraulic issue, I can quickly touch that, go to the hydraulic issue pages and reference the particular pubs pages. As well as we have what's called an in-flight guide. So flying in the local area, it's kind of like a quick reference guide for us, for people that we talk to, airspaces we go to, frequencies, uh, that we use, uh, as well as, hey, if you've got any emergencies, these are your no kidding uh, minimum fuels that you need to have to be able to go to a different uh, airfield for bad weather or emergencies that you particularly have. So all good stuff that we've got that's just right at our fingertips uh, when we're flying. So now, rather than having a bunch of paper pubs, we have two of these that we'll throw in here, along with our typical uh, knee boards that we fly with. We throw all of that in there, uh, and then for us generally as well, I've also got um, kind of like a knee board that I can use for my electronic flight bag that will just slide on here. So I'll show you at least uh, an easy thing for that. I can throw that on here, put that on my knee, and then I've got my one piece of paper over here that I can write on. Um, that's generally what I use for like cross-country flights. Throw that in there and make sure I've got all the applicable pubs and 
uh, piece of paper that I need. Sometimes now that we don't have paper pubs, you'll tend to see uh, pilots will put snacks, waters, all that kind of stuff in there for the longer, uh, longer cross country flights that we've got. The next thing I'll show you is the G suit. So for us, that is what we use to be able to help uh, go against any um, G's that we're undergoing under uh, any flights. So for us, it's a requirement if we're expected to pull more than four G's in flight, we need to be wearing a G suit. However, typically we wear a G suit every single flight for us. So uh, there are bladders, air bladders that are inside of uh, the G suit. We've got ones in front of our actual stomach. So to help our stomach muscles, ab muscles to push up against uh, as we're um, pulling G's. And then we've got bladders all throughout our, our legs as well. So through this tube here, as we're hooked up to the aircraft ex itself through our bleed air, uh, it will actually uh, push air through here as we're starting, the aircraft is starting to go under, uh, under G. So if I'm gonna be undergoing about four G's, I'm gonna be feeling like I'm, I'm pulling about three G's with the use of a G suit. What does it feel like as it kind of uh, inflates? I'd probably equate that to putting a blood pressure cuff around your whole entire waist and your, and your legs is what I would feel, what it kind of feels like against you. Why is that important when you're experiencing G's to have that force? Yeah, so for us to have this, this helps when you undergo G's generally, it's gonna pull, pull the blood away from your heart down to your outer extremities. So when you undergo G's and you have a G suit, that's gonna help push the blood back towards your heart, keep you from having any light loss uh, and such and things all of, of that nature. So keep you from being you know fit to fight, be able to keep uh, flying. So for us in the A10, generally we don't endure more than five G's for a whole lot of time. We can't sustain it, kind of like the F-16. But for us, at least, we're able to pull G's and then this is gonna help us, you know, keep from having any light loss. So things that we've got on here, each G suit has a pocket for a hook knife. So for any time, if we're under, if we have to eject uh, and we end up under canopy and there's any issues with some lines, we have line overs, we're able to cut uh, up to four lines of those that are having any issues. So generally each pilot will fly with their own personal knife, but we also have this, you know, right over our leg to be able to grab for under canopy, as well as, you know, if for any reason we're uh, in an area that we need to utilize and a, a knife, we've got that there as well. Um, so the G suit itself will go around your waist. It's got two uh, buttons to button itself and then a zipper to come back up. And then over here, this is, uh, these are where we can loosen it up as we're actually putting the G suit on on our legs. And then once you actually get the pants on, you'll tighten it up so it's tighter around your legs. We've got two G suit straps as well. So if people didn't, before they kind of embedded knee boards uh, that I showed you earlier, uh, people would put their um, data cards or any paper that they need products to reference, they'd put it here um, on their actual G suit legs uh, itself. For me, what I do is I keep my flight gloves here. So when I have my uh, G suit actually on, I can just pull those off before I do my walk around of the aircraft. Uh, recently, uh, only in the past few years, we've actually gotten approval to be able to have uh, flight gloves that have up to three holes in our fingers. Usually it's, hey, you're gonna have all your fingers covered. A lot of the reasons why this is useful for us, so when I'm using my iPad, I can actually uh, hit the buttons on my iPad rather than have to take the whole entire glove off use the actual buttons on the iPad and then put it back on. I'm sure you've seen some gloves in the winter time where you can open up your phone and text on your phone with the gloves or with all your fingers covered, but it's just not always 100% accurate and works for us. So we got approval to accept the risk that, hey, if we were to have, you know, a fire in the cockpit, uh, that we're going to have, you know, three fingers that are exposed for us. Um, but so we've got these flight gloves that we'll wear. I usually put them on just prior to uh, my walk around of the aircraft and then I keep them on until I'm outside of the aircraft afterwards. And then for me, I'd say, you know, you'd probably, if you ask like percentage wise of people that fly, that fly with contacts or with glasses, I don't know the exact percentage, but now that it's approved for people to have correct, uh, corrected lenses to fly with, uh, for me, I fly with contacts. I've had contacts since I was in the seventh grade. But if you're gonna fly with contacts, you have to get through an approved contact lens program. 
Uh, but uh, while I'm flying with them, I am required to have my glasses with me in my pocket at any point in time. So that way, if I'm flying, I have an issue with my contact uh, and I have to take them out, then I can quickly grab my glasses. So uh, these are not anything that you'll see in vogue or fashion type of glasses. They're the standard issued, you know, kind of like BCG type glasses. We have to see you put them on. Oh gosh, okay. So I can't see now because I've got both the contacts and the glasses on. But uh, nothing that you're going to probably be catching anybody asking for your number in these things. But uh, hey, I'm still flying an airplane if I had to wear them. So I have to keep those there in the pocket. Uh, for me, I usually always carry some tissues with me because uh, no matter what, the nose always seems to run uh, afterwards. And then other than that, I generally just keep uh, an open pocket for, hey, I've got a long sortie, I've got a snack in my pocket or things along those lines uh, that you've got. Uh, but yep, two pockets here that we can keep. Uh, generally, they're glasses. Some people will keep if we're going to fly nights, they'll put a flashlight in their pocket, things along those natures. So uh, no requirements other than having to have your glasses in there for those specific pockets itself. This is everything that I would take with me to the jet as a fighter pilot.